Well, it's a big one, Michelle. That's and we, and all breeders know that's a, that's the sale. We're all trying to get our yearlings onto that sale because it's a premier sale and it's just the biggie. You know, it's like a, the biggie of a horse running in the July. It's the same sort of prestige. You can just see the individuals, the quality of the horses. You can go to other sales, but that's where you buy the better horses that are bred in South Africa. And just the camaraderie amongst the breeders there. And there's always that special hype about the national sales that, that I haven't experienced at other sites. What goes through you when those yearlings are in the ring? Can you describe that emotion? No, not on TV, eh? <laughs> no. Very nervous. <laughs> when they first go into the ring, um, oh, we've all been through it. Uh, you're nervous. Um, you're hoping you're going to get a bit for starters to get the, the things going. But once the bidding goes and it gets up to what you think is a reasonable price for that yearling, then one feels a heck of a lot better. We bring them in in January for if we're preparing for the national sales. At this time of the year, it's three months before. It gives you enough time to do the necessaries. When they come in, they're still a bit rough. Some are put on a bit of a diet and the others have to be fed up a bit. So yeah, so we start off basically with the feeding program, handing them properly. We lunge our yearlings in the first two months of a prep. And of course, uh, it takes a week or three to get them to lunge and to learn to lunge. And then we build up the lunging to like five minutes each way. Yes. Then the last month, we generally walk in hand. So on. We have a, a walker. So we start exercising them once a day in the walker. The later falls. You know, they need to be muscled up a lot more. The earlier foals are naturally, some, most of them, those earlier foals are naturally muscled by now. They've got a couple of months on, on the other ones. Although we don't send many later foals to the nationals, obviously. And then we get to walking them twice a day in the walker. And then alternatively walking them in hand, you know, as soon as, whenever we get a chance. Uh, this year we've got quite a big string. So it's, it's, it's quite labor intensive. So, you know, when we can, we walk the whole string. Do you find they develop and change a lot in the month before the sale? They do, Michelle. They can, you know, if we stop lunging, they can tend to get a bit fat, some of them. So we might take them back to the lunge because the walking in hand isn't sufficient. Do you ever have favorites? No, we always have favorites. All horse people have favorites. Um, but yeah, that's for me to know. My favorites, I suppose my grooms know who my favorites are, but we don't tell any, we don't go to sale and tell people we've got favorites. You have favorites, you know, we, we were these animals from day one, so as they grow, but yeah, but there's no favoritism. They all, they all get the same treatment, they all treated the same way. Jill, I don't like to have favorites. I don't, um, because I just think it's unfair. It's like your own children, you don't want favorites. I try and treat them all alike and give them the equal amount of time. If I walk past the stable, I'll give them each an equal amount of time, touching them at the door and playing with them, yeah. But there's some that grow on you. But so by the time we get to the sales, you know, there's, there's an odd favorite coming through. Going into the sales, do you have a fairly good idea as to which yearlings are going to go for the better prices? We do, Michelle. I think you, you, know, you tend to know which are your more commercial yearlings that you see by the proven sire of that particular yearling. If it's a new sire, obviously you're not going to get what you would for a proven sire. Yeah. And the female lions have got the black type in there and you know which ones um, are, are more valuable. Uh, and you know the, the results of previous falls too. But there's always money for a good individual. You know, if, that, if the individual is looking good, and it's a nice, nice uh, top, you get, you get your fair money for them. Peter, when a yearling goes for a price a lot more than what you anticipated, what's that feeling like? Very exciting, very. Um, we sold Fort Vogue for 2.2 million way back. 
Is that feeling something that stays with you? Of course it does, yeah. And I, I hope one day the, the luck comes around a second time. How would you describe your draft this year? My colts are very similar except for one. I've got one chestnut out of the five, but the other four, they, uh, you, you've got to look at them to recognize which one's which. You know, you've got to look a little closer. The fillies, I think they've all got their own qualities. I would describe them as, um, you know, there's a, quite a big variety. There's a good selection of stallions, there's earlier horses, there's sprinters, there's, there's a good mixture, put it that way, through the whole draft. How important is it for your grooms to see these yearlings go through the ring and achieve those prices? They are very important, it just lifts, lifts their morale. At the time of choosing yearlings, there's always quite a lot of debate amongst them as to which ones they get and they would like to have, you know, the ones that they like, you know, and of course the smartest yearling, they can see it too and they all want it, but in the end it equals out and when they go into the ring, they, they're very proud to go in there and show off their yearling. They get excited. They've all got their prices for their horses and there's always a challenge amongst themselves that their horse is going to do better than the other ones. It, it just drives them to, to do a better job in the long run. How busy is life on a stud farm ahead of a yearling sale? Yeah, it is busy, but it's like anything. We've been doing it for quite a while now and we, we, you know, we got our system. Our grooms have been with us for a long time. They know what they're doing, um, so that makes the job a lot easier. Well, I'd say the last month is hell, you know. We, uh, we by then, uh, everyone's cleaning horses flat out and we are uh, trying to get them looking as smart as ever. But it gets busier, obviously now, you know, we've got next, end of next week we go to the sales, so now it's a matter of touching the horses up and the manes and the feet and the tails and and try and fit in the farm chores that still have to be done um, simultaneously with that, with that. And of course by then the, the grooms have, have got their own their, their individual yearlings which they are preparing and they're pretty proud of them and they're all trying to get them looking magnificent. <laughs>